I want to start with where things ended because we saw you whisper something to Cameron in the time before you guys came out from the backyard after you were eliminated. I'm intrigued because this past week you really encouraged him, work with Sari should you come back and I don't. Was that just a repeat of that statement or was there anything else you told him in that final moment? Uh, that final moment for me and Cam was just, hey, man, I respect the hell out of you. I love you so much. And please just honor exactly what we talked about, which was uh, to the best of your ability, just try to protect Sari as much as possible, man. Mm, okay, well, I want to talk about that because, listen, you, you did say last night to Julie, like, I did everything I could to protect my mom's game, and that worked to a certain extent. But I got to say, there were certain things that you kept secretive from yeah. your mom or some reads yeah. that she was making that you were sort of in denial of the big one. I got to talk about yeah. you told blue that your mom was playing with you in the yeah. house. You chose to not tell Sari that you told blue and actually you skewed her in a way to initially say, Oh, maybe Izzy told her. You even said this yeah. past week. Oh, maybe it was something that you did. It was certainly something that had us asking like, Jared, what are you doing? Talk to me yeah. about both the impetus behind you deciding to tell Blue that secret and then subsequently yeah. not telling your mom that you had told Blue. So starting with Blue first, um, it was easy for me to to want to tell Blue the secret because uh, Blue, Blue divulged a really big secret about her game outside of here to me that was just really personal for her. And that was her being a strategist in this game. And um, although it was nothing that I would ever use against her, I knew that it was something that could really kind of be crucial to her game. Um, me and Blue were starting to develop a really tight relationship and uh, more than anybody else in the house, she really had her speculations early on about me having more than me having more going on than exactly what I was putting out there. And I knew that if I wasn't to let Blue in on this secret somehow, some way that uh, I would kind of lose a really close ally that I had in this game. And uh, it would have made this game that much more tough for me because I, I mean, obviously we had Izzy and then we lost Izzy pretty early on. so. After losing Izzy, I knew that it was I knew that me and my mom would have a really a really tough road ahead of us. So I figured that just for my personal game and for my mom's personal game, it'll be best to let somebody in who I knew that I could trust at the time um, and who I hope I still can trust moving forward um, to kind of just let her know, like, this is this is exactly why I'm so adamant on wanting to keep Sari in the house, because um, I knew that after a while, um, people would start to catch on that. And people did start to catch on to the fact that uh, I was pretty overprotective when it came to Sari and uh, especially Izzy also and people realized that that relationship is really tight and I didn't want people to start questioning and possibly wanting to separate it um, due to thinking that it was something that would have went too far and Blue was definitely one of those people that I felt like needed to know. So then when you know Sari is talking about Blue possibly acting a different way around her why did you not decide to to come clean to your mom about the fact that you had been the one to tell Blue? Um, so my mom was already getting really nervous about uh, certain things that we both kind of connected on. Uh, she would say something like along the lines of, hey, my son did something on New Year's Eve. And then I would follow that up and tell Blue another day, like, yeah, you know, I had a party on New Year's Eve or whatever. And then she'll be like, huh. And then one day Blue actually approached me like, hey, it's so funny that you don't use the house toothpaste. Only you and Sari got the same toothpaste. So I started to already see that Blue was catching on to what was going on. And I knew that my mom would get really paranoid that if, if Blue knew that uh, it would probably be a problem for her for whatever reason. But my mom did not have the same relationship as I did with Blue. Um, she didn't spend the time to kind of vet Blue out to see if she can even trust Blue as much as I could. And uh, I think at the end of the day that I just really wanted to protect her from the paranoia of thinking that somebody knows somebody's always going to say something and then you know, end up hindering her game by targeting the wrong person who may be the only person in the house right now to want to help her. So I think the impetus behind one of the reasons you're sitting talking with me today is this confrontation you have with Corey, where you really made him feel uneasy when you sort of teased him when you had the veto, like, oh, maybe I'll use it. Like you really wanted to rattle him. And that served its purpose to the point where yeah. he ends up airing everything you had spilled to him over the past six weeks. Talk me yes. through your perspective during that and all the fallout that happened. Um, with The fallout with me and Corey was uh, something that was actually initiated by Cameron. Cameron told Corey about uh, a piece of information that I gave him. And um, ultimately, it was the downfall of my game. Corey was, uh, in those last couple of weeks leading up to my eviction, I actually was already on a train of not trusting Corey. And I, I was going to be going after Corey regardless. And uh, Corey just kind of got kind of got ahead of me on that one. And um, I don't think that, uh, you know, once again, I don't regret anything that happened up until that moment. Um, only thing that I do regret is just not putting Corey up, essentially. Um, but uh, besides that, uh, 
I think everything was meant to happen the way that it happened. Um, unfortunately, like um, my my protection of Izzy was pretty much a big part that played into that whole argument of me and Corey. Uh, if I would have just let it go and just say, hey, you know what? We're going to be voting Izzy out and keeping Felicia and uh, kind of support people more on that. I don't think that argument would have ever even happened. But people saw that I was really adamant about keeping Izzy. And um, I think once Izzy, you know, made her rounds with America and kind of had that little fallout with America too. It also played a big part in why Corey was just like, you know what? Jared's already saying he doesn't trust me. He's really close with Izzy. I know a lot of information that uh, Jared and Izzy may, may have gave me. And um, now it's time for me to let it out because now I'm against them. So. Now, look, I wouldn't be remiss if I didn't bring up uh, some things that you had said in the house that have certainly pinged on the radar of right. the viewers of the show. Uh, during that fight, uh, when the jag lie gets brought up, you indicate to Matt, you may have misunderstood me. That was certainly something that Matt understandably took offense to, given his disability. Yep. You had at one point called America the R word out of anger. Even this past week, you had told Blue that you felt like Matt couldn't and shouldn't make the final two because everyone would vote for him in part due to his disability. This yeah. language can certainly be perceived as ableist. I would just love to hear sort of like your reaction to making those comments in the house. Yeah, for starters for Matt, and uh, me and Matt had a conversation about this after and he completely understood. And Matt also told me that he felt as if uh, when we were in this argument, he felt like he kind of just needed to pull out something to make himself essentially feel better about the decision, but regardless of how he felt or how I felt about it, at the end of the day, uh, disabilities is something that I would never use to my advantage inside of this game or outside of this game. Um, I, I still do understand intent versus impact, regardless of what I intended to say. Um, and I know that is something uh, every day uh, moving forward that I need to work on and make sure that it's just never skewed and there's never even a line to be blurred there. It's just something that it's just I have no space for that in my everyday life. Um, I coach kids with disability every day and it's just something that I would never want to be a. Uh, want to be seen as and uh, never want to put on somebody else to make them stressful or make them, I mean, make them stressed out or make them feel as if they're any less than anybody else in this house. So it's something that I definitely want to that I definitely wanted to put out there and make sure that people were understood. That's just not who I am. And uh, regardless, there's no space for that in my life moving forward. And, and honestly, even before this, there was just no space for that. Now, there have also been some comments that you made about women as well. I know you talked with Blue about this idea of a body count, how that's something that you disapprove of in a, in a partner, even though you yourself would be fine with it. Uh, you even said at one point that you, quote, only started seeing women as people uh, up to a certain point. Can you clarify some of those comments for me as well? Um, so what I said, what I meant when I said uh, only started to see them as people is uh, as a young kid, uh, you, you learn that, you know, sometimes you get brought up, especially having a single mom and a single dad. Um, I have 11 different brothers from 11 different moms. And I, I feel like that a lot of the values that I was taught bring, brought up that I was taught being brought up was actually negative values. And I told her that once I was able to get away from those things and abs absolutely be able to grow into my own self as a person, I was able to see everybody as people, not only just women, but men also, and understand that everybody has their own perception. Everybody has their own perspectives and everybody is allowed to do the same exact thing. No one person is better than the other. No one gender is better than the other gender. And uh, it was a learning experience for me throughout the house. And that's why I loved having Blue and people like Izzy, who was able to kind of just sit me down and be like, hey, listen, this is what you thought. This is maybe how you was brought up, but this ain't what it is. You know what I mean? And it was a lot of teaching moments for me in that house to understand that, hey, everybody is, is people, regardless of what, what they may be, look like, what their gender may be, uh, what their skin color may be. And the same thing for me, I feel like a lot of the times throughout my life, um, I was looked at as somebody who may have been less than just because of the color of my skin. And that's something that I never wanted to impose on anybody else moving forward, regardless of the reasoning behind it. Like I said, whether it's gender, whether it's sex, whether it's skin color, whether it's anything. Um, so I definitely want to make sure to just clarify that uh, I see everybody as people, regardless, uh, small, short, uh, white, black, brown, yellow. It doesn't really matter to me. Purple, green, red. I, I love them all. And I'm one of those people who just want to make sure that uh, everybody's involved, everybody's included. And uh, I learn every single day just more about myself and more about other people and more that uh, some of the things that you might have learned that you thought was values growing up, it's just not, it's not it. And uh, people are different and you can learn something from people every single day. You just got to be open to learn. One quick thing I want to do, word association. I'll give you a name of a house guest. First word that comes to mind. We'll go through this super quick. America. Uh, lover. Blue. My girl. Bowie Jane. Arnard. Cameron. 
My boy. Sari. Mama Dukes. Corey. The Brains. Felicia. Mama Fee. Jag. Jag Meister. Matt. Maddie Ice Pig. And finally, Mimi. <laughs> My cousin that I never had.